Thanks everyone for uh, coming on to this webinar. We're gonna have some great information. Uh, just a couple of quick things to go over. Hi, I'm Rob Stanley, Chief Marketing Officer for Feedback Wiz. Uh, we've got a great webinar today about how to scale on Amazon and increase your profits. And we will have a live Q&A at the end of that. And special thanks to obviously Feedback Wiz and Turnkey Product Management. And I've got Jeff and Henson on with us. Uh, Henson, why don't you go ahead and uh, introduce yourself to everybody. Hey Rob, thanks for uh, scheduling this for everybody. Uh, my name is Henson, CEO, co-founder of FeedbackWiz, and today we have uh, Jeff Lieber. He's our guest from Turnkey Management, and he's going to be, uh, you know, we're going to be discussing on some strategies on how we can increase profits, and kind of take a look, quick look at uh, some of the latest strategies and some tips we can help the Amazon sellers. Awesome. Cool. Well, hey guys, it's, uh, thanks for joining us and super excited. So my name's Jeff Lieber. I'm the founder of Turnkey Product Management. And yeah, we just uh, did a little practice run here and we have some amazing content for you guys that's going to help you maximize Q4 and uh, hopefully put a lot more profits and cash into your, into your pockets. So should we dive in? Are we ready? Uh, just real quick, if, uh, if somebody could just type something in the question and answers, just make sure that's working. Uh, be, so that way we can try to get those uh, questions answered as we can. And then if I can't get to all of them, uh, Jeff or Henson will be sure to uh, definitely answer those as we go. Cool. So it might just take a second. I'm just waiting to see if we can get one to come in here. Oh yeah. Someone just, if someone could put a test question in the chat yeah, box. Yeah, just Sweet. hi or something. <laughs> just so we know this is working. Yeah, there we yeah. go. Nice. Thank you guys. Appreciate that. All right, Jeff, why don't you go ahead? Awesome. And yeah, guys, feel free. I know we're going to cover a lot of great stuff, but feel free just to put in any questions throughout the presentation while it's top of mind and we'll either cover it at that time or definitely at the end, we're going to have time to hang out with you guys. You know, even if it's unrelated to the, to the topic, you know, we're happy to chat Amazon. So let's dive in. Okay, so just a little bit about uh, our, our company. So Turnkey Product Management, we started over four years ago. We now have over 15 employees at our company. We sell over eight figures per year. Uh, we actually trained one of the sharks from Shark Tank's entire portfolios um, to help them scale on Amazon. And we're working with, with some of their companies as well uh, to this day. Um, and yeah, we, at Turnkey, we basically do uh, nearly manage every aspect of our clients, Amazon Seller Central and advertising and marketing and sales strategies, review strategies, anything with the goal of helping them grow their sales. That's what we do. And we've done it in dozens of niches from beverages to supplements to equipment, beauty, you name it, we've probably done it. Um, and yeah, we basically just are always innovating and testing what's working you know, what, what worked a year ago is not <laughs> typically working today. Amazon's fast changing. And so our job is to stay on top of it for our clients. So we're going to share some of what's working today. And uh, yeah, so we just help our clients scale to seven or eight figures, depending on where they're at um, with done for you and done with you services at turnkey. So, Hey, everyone's Henson here from feedback Wiz. a quick intro about our company for people that haven't used our software or know about us. Um, we launched in 2017, our team comprises of, um, you know, people that are experts in software engineering, e-commerce and, uh, customer experience. And since our inception, we've helped over 20,000 Amazon sellers, uh, from across 13 Amazon marketplaces, automate review generation and really help increase their revenue. Um, our current suite of tools includes uh, feedback review automation, listing and product review alerts, order management, and our brand new profits and accounting analytics tool, which uh, I will talk a little bit about at the end of today. And here at Feedback Wiz, uh, you know, we're working hard. We're currently innovating a lot of brand new tools for you guys. So we got some of the upcoming tools coming out, including inventory management, PPC automation, and listing repricing. Awesome. Just a few things you guys are doing over there. All right. So let's dive in. Uh, so the first time we want to cover one of the main things whenever we look at clients is how can we increase the, your brand's average order value and lifetime value of a customer? So uh, for those who don't know, lifetime value is basically how much on average a customer spends with you, with your company over the lifetime of you know them being a customer. 
Um, and so imagine if you are a one product company, let's say you're, you just got one product and it costs 20 bucks and you're competing against a company that has 10 products in the same niche serving the same customer and their average lifetime value is a hundred dollars. So they basically have five times as much spending power than you, right? Five times as much profits probably. And they have a, a bigger ability to scale. They can spend all that extra dollars to acquire a customer on advertising, on marketing, on cool strategies to test out. And so one of the quickest ways that you can uh, grow your business and, and put more profits in your pocket is to add on more products that are, are under the same brand and serving the same customer. So ask yourself, who is the customer? So let's say you're selling a, a yoga mat what else can I sell that customer? Maybe it's a yoga towel, yoga block, maybe yoga digital products, um, you know, uh, digital uh, like co courses and things of that nature. You can sell affiliate products. And there's so many ways you can get creative to sell more and serve that customer. And they're going to stay with you for a longer period of time. One of the fastest ways to do that on Amazon is by simply adding a new variation to an existing product that you have. And uh, so one example of this is if you sell coffee, for example, it would be adding more flavors, right? Adding French roast or adding, I don't even know what coffee flavors are these days, uh, you know, <laughs> Starbucks mo mocha flavored coffee or whatever. So add, you know, more and more variations based on flavor. You can also do it based on size or color. If you sell resistance armbands, you can sell different colors, uh, different durabilities, different thicknesses, different weight weights, right? Um, there's so many different ways to expand um, and, and that's a great place to start. Um, if you, if you currently only sell like one variation of a product, like try to sell two or three or four. Um, and so that's just a great way to expand as we talked about, uh, next one talked about, if you can try to find a way to launch repeat purchase products. So some of our most successful clients that we've ever had at turnkey, they tend to have at least some component of repeat purchase products, whether that's supplements or coffee or beverages or skincare, um, things of that nature where, you know, you acquire a customer once and if they love your product and, and they need to purchase it again, they might buy from you 10 times over the next year or two. And that's amazing, right? Because maybe you only paid 10 bucks or 20 bucks to acquire that customer, but you might, they might spend a hundred or 200 bucks with you over the next year. Versus if you're just selling a one time, you know, hit it and quit it product where, where they only need it once and they don't need anything else from you again, it's going to be a lot harder to compete in the, in the long run. So um, it's okay if you sell those one-off products, but try to add on for additional SKUs products that can be repeat purchase if possible. I um, would highly, highly recommend that. Um, and if you do, uh, make sure that you're taking advantage of Amazon's subscribe and save program um, on Amazon um, and make sure your products are enrolled in that. And then also you can choose what percentages you want to offer off as a, you know, as an extra incentive. So, Oftentimes the default is set to 0% off, like, like no, no discount for subscribe and save. So I would recommend you change it to five or 10% or more uh, in order to try to incentivize, give people a reason to join your subscribe and save. So make sure to go check what your percentage offs are for your subscribe and save if you're in that boat. Cool. So if nothing else there, let's go on to a couple other options. You can add bundles. So you may have seen recently, uh, we did a video on Amazon's virtual bundles that they just came out with. So it's really easy. So if you sell, say, a yoga mat and a yoga towel, and they're currently separate SKUs, you can now bundle those together as a virtual bundle, just by creating that virtual bundle listing, and Amazon will do the work for you. So that's a really, really nice, easy way to add on, um, you know, more, more SKUs and, uh, you know, and higher average order value. So highly recommend testing that out if you haven't already. And then next one, talk about uh, if you're thinking about how can I launch more products or you're not sure what products to get into, a great place to start is by checking out the market basket analysis in Amazon brand analytics in the back end. So there's so much great data in there that will show you what your customers are purchasing alongside your product and will give you great product ideas. I guarantee that. Hey, Jeff, just yeah. real quick. Uh, if anybody's jumping on Facebook Live, we did have a little hiccup. Uh, don't worry, we are recording this and uh, within the next day or two, we will have uh, this up on the YouTube channel for both Turnkey and Feedback Wiz. So uh, anybody who's jumping on live or watching, we will definitely have a recording of this. Uh, we did have a little hiccup, but we are live on Facebook now. So go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, appreciate it.
Yeah, we basically just didn't say too, too much important stuff. Basically just increase the high lifetime value of a customer and average order value by adding more SKUs uh, is the, the summary so far. Um, so I want to talk about during the coronavirus or COVID, you know, you've probably seen that different products are now in demand. So if you're in the boat where maybe some of your products are not in as high as demand as they were pre-COVID, um, which one of our clients was in that boat, they had um, well, most of their product SKUs were sold to people that worked out in gyms. And that was specifically for that. And they were doing great before. But the problem was, is that all gyms have basically closed nationwide or close to it. And their sales, you know, have really taken uh, a hit because of that. And so, you know, what do you do when, when challenges come up, you got to find ways to get creative. So we helped them come up with a list of 10 potential products that they could launch in the home workout space. So it still fit under their same brand. It still served basically the same customer, but it served them in a different way and met them where their needs were at at the time. We helped them launch over five new products and now their sales are almost back completely to where they were before. And I, I guarantee it that even when COVID ends, they're going to keep selling those products because they're great products they came out with. And now they've just created a, an even better, broader spectrum of SKUs under an awesome brand. And uh, they're going to be very happy they did that for the long run. So, um, so yeah, so get creative. We also help them reach out to influencers. That that was really big in the space. A lot of influencers are you know working from from home a lot a lot more these days and you know they can make videos for you and post it to their audience so now's a great time to reach out to influencers um so yeah those are just a few examples of what you can do to move quickly um and then yeah we have you know more COVID updates on amazon as, as those are changing so we can always send that to you guys as well as it changes but um hopefully those are you know some some tips so think about all the info i just talked about maybe there's one thing you can go do maybe it's add a variation to your, to your current product line or, you know, get into a whole new product or repeat purchase. Just think about what, what can you do in order to uh, grow your business? So here's one last example of one of our clients that, that did what we just talked about. So they came to us doing about 213 grand a month in sales. So they're already doing really well, but then um, helped identify some additional products. They came out with a 2.0 version of the product. They came out with a repeat purchase subscription model as well. And in nine months, they tripled to over 744 grand a month in sales. So that is what is possible. So Henson, I talked about a lot of stuff there, but we need to remember that you need to uh, measure your Amazon profitability. And uh, that's where you guys come in, our, our experts at that. So can you shed some knowledge on that? Hey, real quick, Jeff, we did have a question pop up. Uh, somebody's asking about how do you qualify for subscribe and save? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, most, most products, uh, do qualify. You have to have enough, uh, like seller data and, and consistent ratings and a consistent review rating as well. Um, so I don't have the, all of the criteria off the top of my head. If you just go to seller central and search subscribe and save it, it should pull up the requirements. And if you don't have it currently, maybe you're not meeting one of those. Uh, maybe you only have three and a half stars or something like that, which would probably be too low for subscribe and save. So um, but yeah, feel free to reach out, out to us. If you can't find it, um, you can just e email us at turnkey and we'll, we'll track that info down for you. Thanks cool. Jeff for all that, uh, really good information on, you know, how to grow your business. So, um, I'm going to really quickly go over, uh, some ways you can help measure your Amazon profitability since I think this is a, um, topic that a lot of sellers, uh, don't really know all the details. So, <clears throat> really quick, um, so running a profitable business means you basically need to understand every single cost uh, that you incur, right? So it made it really simple to basically break down these costs in three different parts, right? We have acquisition costs, we have overhead costs, and we have Amazon fees and expenses. So acquisition costs are uh, pretty straightforward, right? These are your direct costs, uh, how much it costs to get your product, right? Which is um, the product costs, the packaging costs, shipping, quality control, inspection, yield, uh, all that good stuff. So it's very easy to know this number because, um, you know, obviously you'll have invoices, you have all the th different metrics from your suppliers to give you this information. Now you also have overhead costs, which is uh, non-product related costs. So this is costs related to running your business. So insurance, rent, utilities, bookkeeping, payroll, tax, travel. Uh, I think overhead costs is one um, section that a lot of sellers oversee. Uh, they don't really 
calculate this inside their overall Amazon profitability, right? So um, you really need to know these overhead costs because they can actually pile up uh, very quickly. And you know, you might be thinking, I'm making a dollar or two dollars per product, but once you put in your overhead costs, um, you could see yourself easily losing 20, 30% margins. So uh, really understand what your overhead costs are and keep track of them. And then we have the main Amazon seller fees and expenses. So every product um, that you sell on Amazon, Amazon collects a commission. So there's over 40 different types of Amazon fees out there. And it's not like you're gonna get charged for every type of fee, but depending on your product, uh, you really need to understand what kind of fees Amazon's gonna ding you for. And without knowing this, um, it's sometimes really hard to figure out if uh, before you even bring in the product, am I gonna be profitable or not? So um, there's, a, there's a page on Amazon that actually breaks down all the different types of uh, FBA fulfillment fees, uh, inbound shipping fees, uh, long-term storage fees, returns, referral fees, PVC. So you really need to keep track of all these different expenses that you're actually spending when you're selling on Amazon itself. Um, so basically these are the three main um, segments of you know, your overall fees and what you need to spend on. And if you have a good idea of tracking this, then it's very easy to figure out what your net uh, profitability is since you know, Amazon gives you all the data on your sales and um, you know, net revenue. So I'm gonna kind of go over some of the key things I think uh, sellers can do to help lower their fees. So there's not a lot you can do um, outside of you know, trying to negotiate with your supplier on how to reduce the cost of your item. But there are some things you can keep in mind on um, how to reduce uh, certain fees that you don't have to incur. Uh, one of the things is storage fees. So with storage fees, Amazon tracks um, you based on this inventory performance index. And there's a new algorithm they use, which they measure based on um, you know, how fast you push your inventory, how much stranded inventory you have, uh, how much excess inventory you have, and they give you the score. And for most marketplaces, Amazon requires you to have a score of 500 or above. Otherwise, they're gonna basically charge you more for uh, fees, storage fees, and then also limit the amount of inventory you can bring in. So you really wanna monitor your uh, inventory um, periodically. And one of the things you can do is you wanna to try to reduce your excess and stranded inventory. Um, so look at the oldest products in your inventory. See, you know, are they moving or not? Are they just sitting there? Have you had any sale recently? If they're not moving, then you wanna consider getting rid of them as soon as possible, which is either creating a sale, uh, running PPC, lowering the price, uh, removing it, right? Im removing, uh, improving keywords. So these are all ways you can try to get rid of that excess inventory. Um, the other big metric they look at is the inventory flow. So this is basically how fast you sell through your, your stock and they call this the sell through rate. Uh, so you wanna try to keep it consistent with um, how fast your sales are. So as soon as you're selling um, your products, you wanna to try to replenish that product as fast as possible and keep a balance. So you don't wanna to have too much inventory and you don't wanna have too little inventory because Amazon's gonna rate you based on that. So, so inventory um, performance index is a very big part of uh, lowering your fees. Or, uh, the next part is the type of products you're selling. Uh, a lot of sellers these days think FBA is the only way to sell or the best way to sell products. And it really depends on the product you're selling. Um, sometimes you have products that are, they don't sell very fast or they're very big and heavy. And these are all products that you may consider not using FBA. You might want to do FBM because a lot of times what happens is if you send it to FBA and it doesn't sell, uh, you know, you're going to get hit based on the weight and the size. And if it sits there for too long, then Amazon will actually charge you more for storage fees. And in the long run, even if you do sell it, you might actually just end up breaking even or even losing money on it. So you might want to come up with a strategy of maybe doing a combination of FBA and FBM. A lot of sellers create uh, different SKUs where they have a SKU just for FBA and a SKU for FBM, and then they might hold the FBM either in the warehouse or you know in their home, and then fulfill them as they're being sold. Um, the next part for lowering Amazon fees 
Um, oh, yeah. Real quick, Kenzen. So on the topic of using FBM, I think that's a great idea because a lot of our clients back in April or May of 2020 when COVID hit, like Amazon FBA warehouses, some of them got COVID, like in the warehouses, they shut down and there's a lot of issues that popped up. Some of you may have seen, used to have prime eligible items, like one or two day shipments, but then all of a sudden Amazon was only promising 30 day or, or 25 day ship times and you, everyone's conversion rates got killed and crushed. And so when that happened, some of our clients had three PL warehouses, like you're talking about Henson, and they had a, a, a backup FBM listing that could do faster shipping than uh, Amazon could. And th those clients, their sales took off like double that month and, and they were ready to go and had no drop. But the clients that were only Amazon FBA and they were 100% relying on that, their sales basically went to zero almost and they got absolutely crushed. And so we had to help them scramble to find a 3PL warehouse that could stay open in during COVID. And so, um, yeah, so that's just another side tip. And if anyone wants any recommendations for 3PL warehouses, we had to vet vet them, like I said, for our clients. So we have a list of like, we interviewed 12 warehouses and we have a list of like, I think the top four um, warehouses. So you can uh, find that at our website, I think at turnkeyproductmanagement.com slash resource, totally free. We can, so if you need a 3PL warehouse or you want to explore that, we have some potential options to throw in the hat for you. So just wanted to mention that uh, real quick, if that's cool. Yeah. And the other thing too, is if you can qualify for seller fulfilled prime, that's also great too, right? That's basically FBM, but prime option. And you know, it's not easy to satisfy the condition, but if you can, and you have a good uh, seller rating, then um, I would definitely explore that option as well. So that kind of yeah. gives you a benefit of both sides. And Henson, um, real quick, we did have a quick question come in and I, I think it was kind of for Jeff, but I mean, I'm sure we could all three answer this. Uh, they were just asking on average from what you've seen from your clients, what is the profitability percentage after all costs, 20% or less? I mean, personally, I'm I, knowing of many, many sellers and sold myself. I think it's really going to vary depending on the product you sell, the cost you're getting it at, where your transportation fees are. Are you doing FBA or FBM? I mean, all those things are going to vary. But Jeff, I think that might have been directed at you based on a lot of the clients that you deal with. What, what do you usually see? Yeah, I mean, it, it varies for sure. I mean, we've got some clients that literally have 50%. 55% net net margins and they're doing significant numbers, but we definitely have some that, that are more in the single digit or high single digit percentages, um, 10, 15, 20%. So it, it totally varies based on a lot of factors. But um, I mean, with your guys' p &L profitability software, do you have any data, Henson, that, that you've kind of seen or? Uh, yeah, like Rob said, it really depends on the product you sell. Um, you know, the data, you know, we can't, we can't disclose people's profitability because every product is different. You know, everyone sells different product, but based on my experience, like I've sold in um, apparel, I've sold in kitchen and the profitability is very different, right? Because you got to also think about returns. Returns is a really big part of the picture. A lot of people don't consider. Um, if you have a high return rate, then you need to have a very high profit margin. So with apparel, uh, believe it or not, return rate can be anywhere from uh, 20 to 30%, right? And with that kind of return rate, um, you can't survive with a 30%, uh, you know. Uh, <clears throat> so you need to figure out like, all right, you know, based on the product before you even sell it, like how much is the return rate going to be? Because that plays a big uh, factor. It was like kitchen return rates, like maybe one or 2%, right? Because this product people just install and then that's it. Right. And then you, when those kind of products, yeah, 20 or 30% is actually really good. Right. Uh, so I would say it, for me, when I used to sell, um, I usually use a rule of thumb. I want to make at least 30% net margins before I even consider selling a product. Great. All right. So uh, let's go to the second part um, lowering Amazon fees. Package optimization is a lot of, uh, it's a, is an area where I think a lot of sellers also overlook, um, when they, when they first source their products, um, you know, the manufacturer is going to basically just put everything in a box and send it to you. And a lot of times you're wasting a lot of space, right? Because Amazon charges you exactly for that dimension. You can't really change the weight too much, but the dimension of the package, uh, can be greatly varied, right? So you want to figure out, all right, can I reduce the empty space in my package? Is it necessary to have, 
you know, um, you know, the extra support or, um, for example, you know, if you're selling like a pool stick or something like that could be considered an odd size product where it's really long and thin, but it doesn't weigh too much, but Amazon's going to charge you a lot for it because the dimension is uh, very awkward. Right. So products where maybe you can take an extra step and have them assemble it, break it down in half or even quarter of size and then package together in a smaller size. Uh, you're going to save a lot on the FBA fees. Uh, the other thing is when you're sending the packages to Amazon fulfillment, uh, you want to make sure that the packaging that you're sending to for each unit is very consistent. So you don't want to have anything sticking out. You don't have any tape or, uh, you know, loose ends, make sure all the, all the dimensions of every single package you're selling is the same because what Amazon I've seen a lot is they will, they will basically measure your biggest package. And then they're going to charge you the same fee for every single other package that you have in there. So you, a lot of sellers don't realize that. And they look at their dimension costs and they're like, Whoa, my package is not that big. And then they have to go and then, you know, figure out how to reverse that. So it's a, it's a big part that um, sellers need to consider. And one of the tools I think really can help is using the FBA fee calculator where you can put in the weight dimensions. And then that way, you know, exactly, how much you'll save uh, based on the package size. Um, and then part three is combo packs and bundles. And like Jeff mentioned earlier, uh, having bundles is awesome because, you know, you can virtually put together different types of items that the seller might need. And it kind of gives you advantage over, uh, you know, some of the other sellers that might be selling single items. Uh, with combo packs, it's also great too, because, um, with fulfillment fees, if you're selling five individual items, uh, Amazon's going to charge you five fulfillment fees, right? For five items. But if you put five together and sell it as one, then you're only going to charge once. So it's a really good way to uh, figure out if your product qualifies for combo packs. Not every product qualifies. So if you're selling vitamins or socks or masks where people want to buy in bulk, right? Then those are products you want to consider um, comboing together or things like barbecue accessories, party and school supplies, you want to bundle those together because, uh, you know, a lot of people will need pencil eraser, notebook, right? Um, so consider uh, your products and figure out how you can save fees and costs based on bundling and comboing together. Uh, one of the downsides of bundling is that um, every time you bundle together products, basically you're creating a new listing, right? And can't modify it later. So you got to really think about you know, making sure that this makes sense before you actually do it. And then um, you can't list them in separate categories. So they also restrict you of selling only one category only when you do that. Um, best advice I have you uh, for you guys is check the Amazon product bundling policies on Amazon Seller Central. Uh, it's, it's a very long list of the rules, regulations, and the things you can do. But um, this is definitely a very good strategy on how to reduce your overall Amazon fees. That is awesome. Cool. So guys, as we're heading into Q4, I want to talk about some different promotions you can run to boost your sales. So the first to talk about is coupon clippings. So a lot of you, you know, hopefully have tested these. Um, so this is the coupon clipping that shows up on the, pro the Amazon product detail page. Um, and it's that little, you know, you can click on, check the box to, uh, to clip it. And it's really user friendly for customers. And, and uh, I think customers love it and they're now looking for it. And then also, it, a lot of people don't know that you also get your product added to Amazon's coupon clipping page. So there's like a deals page with coupon clippings with hundreds of products. You can you know, filter by category. Um, so that's, that's just another benefit is you get placed there. So you'll, you'll find new buyers and, and traffic there um, to, to you know, learn about your product and purchase it. The other great thing is you're only charged the 60 cent fee anytime someone actually... Uh, clicks the coupon and actually follows through with the purchase. So that's what's really nice is, you know, you only pay that fee when someone actually bought it. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. That's really fair the way that Amazon bills that. Uh, next, I want to talk about lightning deals. So um, this has been around for a few years. You know, I think a lot of you probably tested these. So it's a flash sale promotion, um, typically featured on the today's deals page of Amazon. Very high visibility. Um, they're limited time sales, usually just a, a few hours um, at a time, and then the deal ends. So it adds that scarcity, which is why I think it works so well. 
the deals tend to cost between 150 and 350 bucks. Um, depends on the time of the year and if it's during the holiday season. Um, but we, we do have some clients where this still works super well. Um, so maybe you, you know, haven't tested it in a while or you've never tested it. I would recommend you just try it, try it once. Just book, you know, book one lightning deal um, for 150 bucks, a couple hundred bucks, whatever it is, and just test it out and then actually measure the results um, and see if it gave you, you know, a profitable sales boost. You know, did you increase your sales by more than the cost of the deal, right? And if you did, then, then you can maybe expand it and start building this in where you're, you're running these on, on the regular. Um, but, you know, it doesn't always work for every niche. It depends on a lot of factors. So if you do, if you lose money and you got no sales boost, then it's okay. You only lost that couple hundred bucks. You tried it and then, you know, you can cross that off your list and, and uh, you know, don't put more money towards that. Hey, Jeff, we had a quick yeah. question come up. Um, I think this might have been from previous. They were mm -hmm. asking about bundling and it says, can bundles be child or parent listings or are they standalone? Uh, so I think what they're, I mean, it could be asking something similar to if they're bundling something, uh, well, I, I was yeah, thinking maybe the, they were trying. In the Amazon bundling policy, it says if it's a, uh, child, if it's a variation product of a parent, they actually don't want you to bundle it together. They want you to just list it as a variation. Um, All right. But that's a good question. I mean, um, I think if you create it separately as a different product, as long as it's not the same product within a parent variation, you should be able to bundle it. If that makes sense, right? Like create as a separate listing. Yep. There you go, cool. Todd, if you're listening, if you need more, uh, why don't you contact us directly? We'll try to get you more info on that. Thank you. Cool. Okay, so now let's talk about Prime Day and Q4. So um, Prime Day is you know, hopefully coming up. Hopefully it doesn't get, get pushed back further and further. Um, so it's coming up in, uh, yeah, like, I mean, we'll, we'll see. It, we've heard that it, it, it could be in uh, October is what we're hearing, um, but you know, who knows exactly, but I would at least plan plan for that, um, that it should be hopefully around then or leading up to um, you know Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Um, so get ready for that. One of the best things that you can do is to schedule lightning deals um, during those deal uh, deal day you know time frames. So you got Prime Day, Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Those are the really big ones. But you know, obviously, you guys have probably seen if you've sold on Amazon before, just in the in the few weeks leading up to Christmas, especially, you know, all those days are still really really great days to be running deals and promotions, and the buying traffic is just so high at that time. So make sure to take advantage. If you haven't tested seven day deals before, I would highly recommend that. It's very similar to lightning deals, except you get the benefit of it being a seven day period and being featured there. Um, it's a little bit more expensive, but uh, typically around three to 500 bucks. So nothing too crazy. Um, and yeah, just a couple tips on those is make sure to check up on the deals leading up to it and make sure they didn't disappear. Make sure they're, they're you know, there's no issues with it. And also, um, a lot of people don't know that you can cancel the deals ahead of time if you don't like your time slot. So let's say sometimes they'll, they'll give you like a midnight time slot from midnight to 4 a.m. Pacific time is your time slot. So that, you know, that's one of the worst time slots you could probably have. And the buying traffic will be lower than if it was say noon, um, you know, uh, Pacific time. So you can always cancel the, the times if, if you don't like it um, and, and try to, you know, only keep the deals that are in really, really advantageous looking uh, uh, deal slots. So here's an example of a client that we had that really loved running promotions and deals. So they came to us, they're called Vitacup Coffee. You might've seen them. They're now in Target and retail and, and all this. But when they came to us, they were starting out, they were doing seven grand a month on Amazon um, and they didn't have their listings optimized and they didn't have uh, the knowledge about all these different types of deals and promotions. And so um, and then we scaled up their advertising as well. So those are the three main factors that we did with them. Um, but all the things we talked about, they helped them grow to over 300 grand a month in sales in less than 180 days. Um, so just incredible, incredible growth. And it just shows what's possible when you do things the right way on Amazon. Oops, there we go. Okay, so next, um, one of the fastest ways to scale on Amazon is to invest some money into Amazon PPC advertising. So I just want to make sure to cover that because as we head into the holidays, 
um, you know, it's a really, really great way to, to boost your sales. It's also one of the fastest ways to lose money if you don't know what you're doing. So you really want to, you know, make sure to be strategic about it um, and, and know what you're doing and, and start small and start conservative if you're not, uh, you know, currently spending a lot or don't have very much experience. So why invest in Amazon ads? Number one, it's surprisingly an actually great way to increase your organic rankings. And um, that's because Amazon tracks everything <laughs> that's happening on their website. And so like if someone searches for, you know, black yoga mat um, on Amazon and then your ad shows up and you're selling a black yoga mat, someone clicks on it and they buy it. Amazon tracks that and they, they know that, okay, that's really relevant for the term black yoga mat. And so uh, if you do that enough times, you will start boosting your ranking naturally, um, you know, your natural page ranking for black yoga mat. So hopefully eventually you'll be showing up on page one of the search results where all of a sudden you're getting those, those glorious free sales, right? You don't have to pay for those sales when, when they click on your organic search result. And that's, that's kind of the holy grail of Amazon. But one of the biggest things to do on the way there is, is to use Amazon ads in, in the meantime to help get there. Number two um, and, and number three, they're kind of related is it helps build brand awareness and gets you in front of new audiences. So we've got some clients, like when we worked with the Shark Tank co companies, a lot of those, co those uh, companies said like, why would I spend money on, on ads? You know, like I'm a sh Shark Tank company and people already know who I am. Um, I said, well, not everyone knows who you are. You know, like, like I, I didn't know who, who they were. I hadn't seen their episode. And so, um, but the, the point is that like, if you're say selling a yoga mat or whatever you're selling, a, a toolkit doesn't matter. Even if it was on Shark Tank or it's really, really awesome, most people haven't heard of your brand, right? And on Amazon, you know, they have Amazon ads are keyword driven, right? So someone searches for, you know, a garage toolkit and you sell a garage toolkit, well, you can put your search result right in front of them at the top of the search results and then boom, you know, you just acquired a new customer that never heard of you. They weren't searching for your brand. They weren't married to any brand. They, they were open to whatever Amazon would give them. And Amazon ads is the fastest way to, uh, to, to get in front of buyers um, and acquire those customers. So really awesome. And then lastly, it's just a great way to get the edge on the competition. So one, not all of your competitors are running Amazon ads. So that's, a, that's an area of opportunity. And number two is most of the people who are running Amazon ads against you are not very good at it. They're not, you know, world-class at it. They're, they're not doing it properly. So if you do it the right way, like what we're talking about, um, you can, you can have that slight edge over your competition. So just to show you some of the results of what's possible. So this is one of our clients. Um, they came to us and they were managing their, their Amazon ad campaigns on their own before. And they were doing pretty good. They were spending, uh, they, they were getting $23,000 a month in ad sales. So that's sales revenue directly tied to the ads that were running. So they're doing 23 grand a month in ad sales at a 39% A cost, which is a 2.6 ROI. So it was, you know, pretty, pretty, pretty decent, not great, but not terrible. Um, and then after just three months of us taking over and, and realizing, you know, what, what's missing in their uh, campaigns and improving the profitability and cleaning things up, we were able to help scale them to $70,000 a month in ad sales, but we also improved the profitability. So we increased it to a 3.5 X ROI and lowered the A cost down to 29%. And then in that same period, their overall sales went from 366 grand a month to 480 grand a month in sales. So um, speaking to the, you know, how organic search results can be improved by PPC. So this is a direct result of that and um, just shows you how powerful and quickly you can scale using Amazon ads. And then, um, so not everyone knows what Amazon DSP ads are, but I just want to touch on it really, really quick. So if you are currently uh, doing well with Amazon Seller Central PPC ads and you're, you know, say spending five grand a month or more and it's profitable and it's going well, the next step I would, I would tell you to consider taking is to, you, is to test out Amazon DSP advertising. So it's still through Amazon, but it's like a different sort of advertising uh, mechanism that they have. It's just a different type of ad platform. Um, these ads are a little different because you can track customers both while they're on Amazon, but also while they're off of Amazon. So when they're you know, on their phone, on apps, uh, on different websites, you can, you can follow them around with ads. You can retarget and remarket to customers who say visited your product listings, but never purchased. So they were interested, but just weren't ready to buy yet. 
you can retarget them and you have a really big layer of control um, over those ads. You can run video ads and really specific types of ads towards them. Um, and we've seen really great results. So uh, here's just one example of a client in our very first month of managing their ads through Amazon DSP, it drove over 59 grand in sales, um, in ad sales directly. Um, and that's at a 17% ACoS. So uh, that's what's possible. So, but, but again, it's, it's really for those that are trying to scale to that next level. They're already spending five, 10 grand a month in ads already. Um, that, that's who that would be for. So hopefully that um, makes sense. Hey, Jeff. Yes. Quick qu question came in. Do you need a registered brand to do DSP? Amazon brand registry? Uh, that's a good question. I, th I believe that you do. Um, and it would certainly help just to have brand registry. So that way you, you can have a plus content and video and all that good stuff to set yourself up for success. Um, so I believe that you do. I'm not hundred percent sure actually. So that's a good question. Um, yeah. So one, one thing on DSP is, is you do have a, if you go directly to Amazon DSP, you can, you know, maybe go to their website and check out their requirements. They might list that there. Um, but you'll see that th they have a $35,000 test budget. So if, you, if, they, if you're going to test it out with them, you got to commit and sign up for a 35 grand, which for, for me, that's, that's a little, a little scary to, to do when you're not sure if it'll work or not. Um, so the other option is you can find an agency that's been approved and certified through Amazon DSP's program. Um, so like we went through that whole process. So we're one of the approved vendors. Um, and so we can offer whatever budget that we want. Uh, it doesn't need to be 35 grand. So we found it's just a thousand dollars is, is the amount that we would need to do a, a, a serious test to see if it works or not. So within a thousand bucks, we can see strong signals that yes, this is working well, let's, let's keep it going. Or sometimes it doesn't always work. And we're like, you know, this is not getting good traction. Let's just stop this test and stop from there. So um, yeah, but that's the last two cents on that. All right. Uh, so that was a lot. So <laughs> Anthony, you want to take it over and uh, catch us up on feedback whiz. Yeah, yeah, we're almost done here. So we kind of just uh, really good content here, just trying to help people with some of these tips, uh, especially for sellers that aren't familiar with some of these strategies. Uh, I know they're a lot kind of <clears throat> basic, but you know, if you guys have any questions, you guys can always email us or uh, contact us directly. We can help you guys uh, answer more of your questions. Uh, so with feedback quiz, I just kind of want to really go through real quick on how we can help uh, sellers grow their business. So with, um, since we started in 2017, we've helped uh, generate more than 5 million product reviews uh, through email automation. And I think a lot of sellers these days, uh, there's been a lot of TOS changes. Uh, actually today, Amazon released a new communication guideline policy, uh, which we'll probably have a separate web webinar for later this week to talk about. Um, but, you know, the good thing is Amazon still allows you to go out, ask your customers for reviews. You know, you just have to do it in the proper way. Uh, one of the new things that we released uh, in July was the automatic Amazon review, request review button, uh, which we can automatically trigger for you. So if you have any doubts of uh, following TOS, uh, using browser extensions, um, you know, we've taken care of all those issues. Uh, so you can actually use it right now in Feedback Quiz. And our newest uh, tool is the profits and accounting tool, which is still currently in beta, but we're going to release it very soon to general audience. Uh, but anyone today, the listening that wants to test it out, um, you can send us an email and we can enable it for you for free. You can use it. Um, so it's a one of kind interface, uh, basically you can track every single detail metric of fees, sales, and have the ability to input like your uh, direct, indirect costs, expenses, things like that, uh, custom group labels and products. So uh, this is kind of uh, what we can help you guys with right now. Um, awesome. And uh, Henson, real quick. So on the request for review button, because when that came out a few months ago, we started using that with our clients and it was working great for reviews, but we were doing it directly on Amazon and it was really slow and you had to do it super manually and it took a lot of time. So like how, how many can you do at a time or like how quickly can you, can you do that? Um, yeah. So the way we do it, uh, it's instant. So as soon as we send the, uh, 
you know, send the request over to Amazon, it triggers it right away. And, you know, there's no wow. limitations on how many you can send at once. The limitation really comes to Amazon's uh, five to 30 day after delivery window, mm -hmm. right? So you got to make sure your products first um, meet that criteria. Otherwise they won't let you trigger it. But as long as it's in that five to 30 day delivery window, like our software will, you know, schedule trigger whenever you want to trigger it. So there's no like lagging wow. or having a, you know, you don't need to have your browser open or anything like that anymore. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So it's like set it and forget it and just saves a lot more time. Okay. Exactly. Yep. Uh, just a quick problem. note there too. It, just so people know, this is part integrated with our software, our proprietary software. So this is not using those Chrome extensions like uh, some of the other ones out there, Jeff. Yeah, that's nice. I've had Chrome extensions literally like hacking my browser and stuff lately, uh, like not related to, to that, but yeah. So I would prefer to not use a, a browser extension. So that's nice. So, yeah, I wanted, since we're in the subject of, you know, measuring profits and increasing, you know, your profits, uh, just want to give you guys a quick glimpse of this profits in accounting tool. I know a lot of you guys um, aren't in the beta program or haven't used it, but if you're using another software, um, really, you know, come check us out, right? Because we spend a lot of time building this and it really just has a lot of detailed information about, you know, every single metric within your Amazon uh, profit cycle. And, you know, we pull in all the different data, your sales, your fees, um, PPC. Um, you can aggregate all different marketplaces together. Uh, you can basically change it to the currency of your choice. I know a lot of European sellers have issues or Japanese sellers have issues with converting to their native currency. So this can all be done on the fly, right? Uh, you can track all the performance on a individual ASIN level or a complete marketplace aggregate level as well. And one of the best features I think we've um, developed in here really is the ability for you guys to uh, bundle your products together. So what I mean is you can custom group and label uh, different types of products. So if you're selling, um, you know, in different categories like clothing or like electronics or, you know, uh, exercise supplements, you can actually go into our tool and pick the ASINs you think like, I want to categorize these as clothing or I want to categorize these vitamins. And then you can pull the data just for those categories and then com com uh, compare them between each other. So I think that's a really, uh, that's a big deficiency that Amazon Seller Central hasn't been able to address. And, um, you know, for you to do it yourself, pulling in a spreadsheet is, uh, is uh, very cumbersome. So, um, nice. Cool. Yeah. So just kind of give you guys a little bit more screenshots. Uh, we're not going to do a demo today just because, you know, it's not, we're just kind of showing you guys what you guys do, uh, can do, but if you go to our features, uh, feedbackwiz.com slash features profit page, you can get more information on that. Uh, so yeah, like I, again, I said, it has all the breakdowns of all the fees, uh, all the costs associated with selling on Amazon, and it gives you the ability to input your own costs, right? So you can put in your per unit cost of goods. You can put in all your, uh, indirect expenses, like, you know, uh, rent, uh, fees, things like that. And it has a lot of graphs and, um, charts to help you identify trends, right? So, uh, in the next iteration, we're going to have a lot of business analytic alerts, which allow you to track um, things that happen. So for example, like, you know, if I change my uh, product image, I want to know what happens to my sales, right? And then you can set different thresholds, um, for example, like refunds, right? Like if I suddenly hit a refund rate of 20% for a uh, certain ASIN, I want to be notified of that right away. So, um, I think having software tools that allow you to track these kind of metrics is really valuable because you're able to address issues right away rather than, you know, uh, later on if you're finding out that, oh, suddenly I have a huge return rate for this product. Um, you know, the customers are saying there's a defect or something in the reviews and um, it can really cost you a lot of money. So uh, there's a lot of benefits on, um, you know, using this tool to help you guys not just measure, but also notify you of uh, things that happen to your products. That's awesome. And um, so I have a question on this. So with this tool, um, so it's in beta right now. So it's, it's like people can join it for free, you said. And then how, how long does it take them? Is it just like you, you link the MWS or the API to your Amazon account? It just pulls in the data. And then within you know, short of you know, that same day, it'll spit out 
the data and profit and loss essentially for, uh, is that kind of how easy it is? Yeah, it's very simple. It's just like connecting to any other third party tool. It's just, all the data comes from MWS. Um, if you want PPC data, then you have to connect your PPC uh, adver advertising, uh, you know, MWS. Um, oh. But once, once you pull it in, it depends on how far back of history you want, right? If you have a lot of products and you want a year's worth of data, then it could take a little while to pull that in. But, you know, if you have a normal size, of, size amount of orders coming in, then that data is available like pretty much within, you know, 10, 15 minutes, right? And then all you have to do really is to input your cost of goods, your expenses, and then we can help you accurately calculate exactly what's your profitability and net margins. And Hed said we got a question that came in real quick. Uh, somebody was asking about, mm -hmm. is this a substitution for a program like Fetcher? I'm not familiar with them, are you? Uh, I believe Fetcher is the profits and loss tool for Jungle Scout, right? Um, I definitely is. I mean, I think we did a lot of market research. Um, you know, we've been developing this tool with a lot of top sellers and, and we just try to figure out all the different pain points sellers have right now. And as you can see with the interface, I mean, it's, it's a lot different than everyone else's. There's just a lot of more data. There's a lot more functionality. Um, I think once you guys use it and play with it, you'll notice how powerful it is. And like I said, we pull a lot of information like your top products, uh, you can download reports for any of the sections. I mean, you can filter and search by pretty much any metric, right? So if you want to find like exactly how much I sold for this, you know, group of products, you can pull that up or you can compare it with different groups of products. And it's just really easy. I think, um, you know, intuitive way to view all the stuff, um, all the data at once in front of you. Beautiful. Cool. So we are almost done, guys. I believe this is the last slide here. So uh, to help wrap things up, one thing I want you to think about looking at this slide is which expert roles are you missing from the below? Or maybe you're either missing them completely or they just have subpar performance. They're not really nailed down completely. Because in, in my experience, what I've seen over the years is if you have these five roles you know, dialed in in your company um, and, and on Amazon, then Amazon should be basically like a, you know, an autopilot sales generating growing machine. So expert number one that I want to make sure that you have is you need to have an Amazon advertising uh, expert. So that's someone that's managing your Amazon seller central PPC and DSP. Like we talked about, if you're, if you're ready to, to do that, if you're doing that. Um, so you need to have an expert because again, you can lose money really fast if you don't know what you're doing. Um, so you want to make sure that someone on your team is an expert or, hire an agency or someone that you trust that you know knows what they're doing and that's what they do for a living. Um, and make sure they have the proper training and systems to, to follow that as well. Expert number two is what we call an account listing health maintenance expert. And what this is, is, well, I guess at the front end piece, you wanna have the software out there like FeedbackWiz. They have an awesome functionality called FeedbackWiz notifications that can track a lot of like the issues that happen on your listing. So if you lose your buy box or, you know, your price changes or you know, your listing goes down, um, you know, using a software like that will help notify you instantly because the, the faster you can learn about it, the faster you can deal with it. So that's step one is make sure you have a software like feedback Wiz is in place. And then number two is have someone on your team or, you know, company or whoever that, they're in charge of dealing with handling and resolving that notification. So fixing the buy box or fixing the listing or whatever the issue is, someone needs to be on that as soon as possible. Expert number three is you need to have a great customer service representative. Um, and, you know, cause Amazon, as you all know, is a review generating, is a review driven platform, right? If you have bad reviews, you're not gonna last very long on Amazon. And so, um, you need to have a great customer service person. That's the human interaction part. Um, you can hire someone part-time for that. Um, you know, very, very, very cheap and, and cost, cost effective, totally worth it. Recommend doing that. Um, and then two, you want to use softwares and, and automations to help improve that. So uh, Henson talked about that they have the request a review button uh, functionality with their software. So make sure you're using that so that you're getting more reviews than your competitors. Not everyone's doing that, right? And use their autoresponder, you know, uh, having some autoresponder like Feedback Wiz or another one that is, is sending automated customer service messages. That will help improve your customer experience and five-star reviews and will help grow your sales. 
Uh, expert number four is an inventory shipping and logistics expert. Um, as you guys know, if you run out of stock, if you don't stay on top of your inventory, your sales go to zero on those products. Um, and it can be very hard to recover from that. So you need to forecast ahead of time, uh, make sure all your shipments are on time. So someone's got to get that handled, someone on your team or a company that you're working with, and they need to have the right systems and, and you know, forecasts and templates. And then the last expert is a sales growth and Amazon tactics expert. Um, so a lot of the strategies that we talked about today, right? Those weren't around two years ago or three years ago because Amazon's always changing. So someone needs to be living and breathing you know, Amazon and staying on top of it. Um, so if someone on your team is passionate about that and they can listen to all the podcasts and um, you know, stay on top of it and, and execute and test those strategies and find what's working, that's awesome. But if you don't, then you should try to find a, you know, a company or a person that can do that for you. Like that's what we do you know, uh, at Turnkey and that's what Feedback Was does. We live and breathe Amazon. So you wanna have someone that you know, knows what they're doing and is on the cutting edge of all that stuff. So just take a second and look at all five experts and think which, which one or two of these are you either missing or you know, whoever's doing on your team is doing a subpar job. And if you helped fix that or tweak that, that could really help take your business to the next level. Um, so as we talked about, Feedback Wiz can solve a lot of those things there, um, especially on the software side. Um, and then if you're missing any of those experts, that's what we do here at Turnkey as well, whether you're missing all five or just one of them, um, that's exactly what we do is we help companies fill that, that their exact needs that they have. So cool. So anything else on that slide or are you guys good? Uh, Jeff, we did have a question come in uh, that was uh, specific to you. They were asking about that. They're aware that you help companies grow and scale, but do you also help with uh, launch product launch? Yeah. Amazon product launches. Yes, absolutely. Yep. Cool. Yeah, I mean, properly planning out a launch is absolutely critical. That first, you know, 30 days of when the product goes live, you really need to nail that and maximize that. If you just throw up a listing and, you know, don't, you know, you just casually promote it when you get around to it. And then those 30 days pass and you had low, you know, low sales and traffic, um, you know, you, you miss that big window of opportunity. That first month is really where you want to like have a strategy in place weeks before you launch. And then you're just following the plan and uh, coming up with that plan and executing on it um, is absolutely critical to set yourself up for success, boost your page rankings, all that good stuff. So product launches are, yeah, uh, absolutely critical. A uh, quick follow-up. Uh, Sean was asking, do you do launches in Canada? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We, we work in multiple of the Amazon international platforms. Yep. All right, guys, we made it. So we're going to get into some free stuff we wanted to give you and open it up to live Q&A. So feel free to you know, start putting any questions you have in the chat because we have some time here. Um, and then the, the things that we wanted to give you guys for free and some value was, so from the turnkey side, so if you liked anything that you heard and you want to try to grow to the next level, if like that's what you want in your Amazon business is you want more sales and, and higher sales trajectory, um, that's what we do at Turnkey. Um, it's really hard to do it on a webinar training like this and like answer everyone's questions and solve all the, your pain points right in, in a training like this. Um, what we found is you really need every business is completely different. And so that's why what we do is like we're happy to hop. If you made it this far to the end of this training, then you're probably very committed to your business. So we'd be happy to hop on a free call with you where we'll literally just ask you questions about your business learn about, you know, where, where you're at currently, where you want to be, where, you know, where do you want to grow to? And then we'll help come up with what, what do we think the steps are that you're missing to, to get there. And, you know, part of that might be, if we think we can help you get there, we'll let you know if we can, sometimes we can't, you know, we're not the best solution for you. And we'll let you know that as well, that um, we'll try to point you in the right direction to the proper resource or anything we can do to help. So whether you're doing, you know, just starting out or 30K a month or 300K a month, you know, we've got clients of all sizes. Um, so if you want to grow to that next level, um, we're happy to uh, schedule a free call with you um, and see if we can help you. So just go to turnkeyproductmanagement.com slash talk. And that's where you go to uh, find, find a time to speak with us. So, uh, but yeah, really appreciate it. And then, yeah, Henson, you want to talk about uh, what you guys got there? Yeah, anyone that hasn't used Feedback Wiz, uh, you know, you can use the promo code webinar TK50, 
50% off first month, you'll get a 30 day free trial. Um, and then anyone that's using FeedbackWiz or wants to try our profits and accounting tool, send us an email support at feedbackwiz.com and we'll enable it for you on your account. Uh, link to sign up is app.feedbackwiz.com slash sign up. Uh, any, if you guys have any questions about anything FeedbackWiz related, Amazon related, uh, you can always email us again at support at feedbackwiz.com. Um, we'll do our best to connect you to the right people and answer the questions that you need. Yeah, so thanks everybody for being on. We are still uh, gonna get to the Q&A here in just a second. So keep those questions coming in. Uh, just jumping back to Jeff real quick. Um, so we have somebody else asking about, do you do help with product launches in the UK? Why don't you just kind of go over maybe where you do or don't <laughs> help with product launches? Yeah, yeah, we do. We, we work on the different uh, international Amazon platforms and, and product launches just the same. So, um, so yeah, we definitely do that. Um, so yeah, you can head over to turnkeyproductmanagement.com slash talk and book a call. And that way we could like learn like, where are you at? You know, how far are you at? Where's your inventory? What's your timeline? We'll ask all those important questions to like figure out, you know, whether we can, you know, it's a slam dunk to, to help you orchestrate that or, or, or if not, but, or, or you can email hello at turnkeyproductmanagement.com if you prefer to just have the conversation through, through email to start out. Um, you, you can email us there as well. Perfect. We got another one here for you, Jeff. So stay right there. Uh, <laughs> how much startup capital do you recommend for product inventory launching PPC DSP if a product is in the consumable space? Yeah. Well, are, they, are you just starting out? That's a follow-up question, that person. Are you just starting out? Like you, you don't have any products or brand or sales yet and you're, you're asking from square one or do you currently, are you already doing... 30 grand a month in sales and you're, you're adding on a new product. Um, yeah. If you could answer that in the chat, that would be helpful. Yeah. So go to turnkeyproductmanagement.com. Was that forward slash talk? I think you said. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, why don't you follow that up with them over there? And then Henson, I think this was one for you here. Uh, how important is it to always have FBA in stock? Even if I have an FBM listing, will it affect conversion and or buy box? Even if I am only the only seller. Uh, in my in my experience, I'm not sure if it's gonna really affect. I mean, if you if you have your listing available with no stock, then it's definitely gonna hurt your uh, sales ranking, right, or your listing ranking. But if you have something in stock, it shouldn't matter. Um, but having FBA in stock, I would say, is always good to have something in stock, just because uh, the way that when you do searches on Amazon, Amazon's always going to prefer FBA listings ahead of FBM listings, right? So in search results, if you only have FBM in stock, then likely your um, your product's not going to be uh, visible as visible as your competitor's product, unless you're only unless you're selling a product where no one else has FBA, right? So it is important to have uh, FBA always in stock, in my opinion, uh, as long as you replenish it, you know. Like I said, with the um, <clears throat> the performance index and keeping track of you know how fast it sells out. Yeah, and, and anybody who's watching this after uh, we're going to wrap this up right now. And anybody who's watching, if there's any questions do come up while you're watching this, either why it was on Facebook Live or on on uh, our YouTube channel or even uh, Turnkey's YouTube channel, feel free to contact us. The contact information's up on the screen. Uh, again, it's. Uh, turnkeyproductmanagement.com forward slash talk or for us you can go to our website or support email support at feedbackwiz.com and uh, thanks again uh, to Henson and Jeff for uh, doing this or putting on this great webinar with all this great information and again turnkey product management and feedback whiz and uh, we'll see you guys soon with another webinar coming up. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and for more information please visit feedbackwiz.com.